Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at tech podcast, over at uh, quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Uh, here in the U.S., it's uh, Thanksgiving week. A lot of people are on vacation. Traditionally, there's not a lot of news going on, so it will be a somewhat short show this episode. But I still was able to scrounge up a couple of little tidbits here and there. Uh, over at gsmarena.com, Ubuntu powered Miezo MX4 to hit early, uh, hit the market in early 2015. A strategic cooperation deal was signed today between Ubuntu and Miezo in the Chinese manufacturer's headquarters. The agreement sets joint goals to build and promote a new version of the. Miezo's Flim OS, which is based on Ubuntu Touch software and an application ecosystem to go along with it. This is pretty neat. A uh, few specifics were provided, but Miezo expects the first MX phones with the new OS to hit consumer markets in both China and Europe in the first quarter of 2015. I don't know about you, but to me, that seems to be awfully... Uh, Awfully aggressive, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, I, I just, that's like four months, three months away. Three months away, four months at tops away. That, that seems really aggressive. But at any rate, um, at Mobile World Conference, uh, okay, so although it is still unclear which models will be getting the overhaul, it's safe to assume that the company's flagship MX4 will be among them. Uh, at Mobile World Conference 2014, they presented a prototype, which we actually reported on. It was called uh, or based on the MX3. Unfortunately, uh, you know, it, it's not clear what's going on with that. So uh, we'll see what happens um, as things progress, and we'll be following this and reporting on it uh, as well. Over at linuxgizmos.com, uh, the Linux based AUV maps Antarctic. Sea ice thicknesses this is pretty cool. I'm reporting this not on the uh, the climate or ecosystem changes, but based on the fact that the hardware that they were using ran Linux. Uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic used a Linux-based seabed AUV to build the first 3D map of Antarctic sea ice and found that it's thicker than it had been estimated. Every now and then we see some good news about climate change sprinkled in with all the increasingly dire warnings. Yesterday, the New York Times reported that solar and wind energy are starting to become competitive with natural gas. Uh, on the same day, the Woods Hole Oceanographic, Oceanographic Institute, or HUI, uh, based in Massachusetts, announced that it had published a paper in Nature Geoscience on experiments run by an autonomous Linux-based submarine called the Seabed. Uh, the underwater survey indicated that sea ice was thicker than it had been previously estimated. So, uh, pretty interesting. They have some pictures of it here. I think it looks kind of like uh, any other, you know, unmanned <laughs> submarine. So, uh, but I thought it was cool that it was running Linux, and that's why we're talking about it here. From uh, Virtual Strategy Magazine over at virtual-strategy.com. Uh, SimCore's SimTrack Master Repository is now supported on Linux. This is pretty neat. The SimTrack Master Repository can be deployed on Linux-based systems for complete end-to-end -end Linux IT environments. So the SimTrack uh, version 2.0.6.18 file integrity monitoring and compliance solution offers increased versatility for those with Linux-based IT environments. And now supported SimTrack... Uh, a complete Linux-based IT environment is now supported by SimTrack from top to bottom. The SimTrack master repository can be installed on Red Hat, CentOS, and Ubuntu. So definitely uh, check it out. Uh, looks pretty interesting to say the least. 
uh, over at linuxgizmos.com. Quad-core media player runs Kodi slash XBMC on OpenELEC Linux. Solid runs tiny $100 Qbox TV media player runs OpenELEC Linux. And Kodi, which is formerly XBMC, on a quad-core IMX6 system on a chip and offers 100 plus megabits per second video decoding. The Qbox TV is the first Freescale iDAT.MX6 based media player to run the Kodi multimedia distribution, says Israel-based Solid Run. The Qbox is closely based on the company's latest IMX6 based Qbox mini PC, which now sells for $80 to $140 US currency, depending on the number of Cortex A9 cores and other features. So the Qbox TV is only available with the quad-core uh, system on a chip, and it goes for about 100 bucks. This thing is tiny. Um, I would love to have one of these and just play around with it. It uh, looks pretty cool. Uh, definitely uh, check it out if that is something that you are interested in doing. It looks, that it looks as if it can give, give Raspberry Pi a pretty good run for its money. From uh, ZDNet.com, over at, uh, what is this? Enterprise Software uh, by Stephen J. Von Nichols. NSA partners with Apache to release open source data traffic program. Many of you think that uh, the National Security Agency and open source software get along like a house on fire. Well, I mean, kind of. Uh, that's to say flaming destruction. You would be wrong. In partnership with the Apache Software Foundation, the NSA announced on Tuesday that it is releasing the source code for Niagara Files, otherwise known as NIFI. The spy agency said that NIFI automates data flows among computer networks, multiple computer networks, even when data formats and protocols differ. De details on NIFI, how NIFI does this, are scant at this point, while the ASF continues to set up the site where NIFI's code will reside. In a statement, NIFI's lead developer, Joseph L. Witt, said the software provides a way to prioritize data flows more effectively and get rid of artificial delays in identifying and transmitting critical information. Uh -huh. uh, they are making this move because the uh, agency's research projects often have broad commercial applications. Either that or they done got, got caught with the pants down and now... They have no choice but to say, well, here's how we were spying on everybody. Not saying that that's the case here, but still makes you wonder. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing and staying subscribed. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.